Mommy, I'm gonna tell mommy. Hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna tell mommy. She hurt my feelings. I'm gonna tell. Anyway, man, I went to the store to go get something to drink. As soon as I got in the store, half of the store, it's like half of the shelf is non-existent. Remind you, I come there all the time. So it's like, you cannot show me something that I usually, I'm used to seeing. So that just tell me, hey, just leave. Feel me, even a coffee party, nigga spraying some, I'm like, you know what? I ain't like what I was feeling, so I'm like, let me be out there. Now, I'm back to, I'm on my way back to work. I have roughly, roughly, yeah, good 10 minutes, solid 10. So, you know, there's a whole lot of things I could talk about, but I already, most of my shit niggas here already, so we ain't even got to express it on video. <laughs> or, uh, they already know how I feel about it. We ain't even got to express it on video. I want y'all to walk with your nigga. Talk with you, nigga. I came and shut it down. Hey, yo, look at this nigga right here. Hold on, let me see ya. See, that's the shit that I want. I want that to be riding as a transportation. Maybe something a little more secure. So you could get some something the same price for a motorcycle. You get some shit like that. So I don't know, man. It's a lot of things going on. You know what I mean? A lot of things going on. Handling them, handling them, handling them, that do. This is what I do. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. You know, today, there's a lot of frustration going on. You feel me? This is my problem. This is a topic on its own, actually. Um, since they started it, let me just give it to them. You see, every time when you speak about black history or black empowerment or anything that has to do with black, let it pass. They're going to have to pass anyway. You can't just stationary and make noise. Every time you speak about black empowerment, black, anything black, look at this shit in my head. Again, following you too, you faggot. You don't like that, right? Pussy. Anything black, when you speak about black empowerment or you want to just encourage black anything or you want to inspire anything black, everybody else feels, any, anybody else who's not black feels intimidated. You feel me? They just feel intimidated. I always wonder why. Why would somebody, why would me speaking about my empowerment for my pigmentation and the, the things that are obvious, that your struggle that you're speaking about will make somebody feel intimidated? Why do you think people feel intimidated by these things? Because they play the role of a child. You feel me? We cannot escape our destiny. Hey guys, when we're gonna get into the topic real soon. It's a spirit that we play, man. We can't even escape it. We don't know how to explain it, but it's like, it's like, it's like sequence of itself and it plays in so many different forms. This is why when we, as a parent, when you speak to your child about needing free time and everything else, they're like, huh? Who the fuck is gonna take care of me? Who am I gonna bother? Who am I gonna nitpick? Who's going, who's, who am I, who am I going to ride shoulders on? Who am I going to vicariously live through? Who am I going to learn from? And that's how it is when you start speaking about black empowerment. Because you are the guardian. You feel me? This is the role that you play as a person automatically. And you as a person is not attached to the color black itself because you are more than the color black. In this lifetime you black, the next lifetime you could be white. You feel me? But it's a frequency. It's a, the color, colors are frequency. It's a vibration. And any color that has been around for a long time, like black has, has its own frequency and has its own understanding. 
So you have to understand these things. You know, I gotta explain it in different forms. Feel me? So even you being a black man, it's just a frequency that you're in right now. This is your state of your frequency that you're in in this lifetime right now. And you playing this frequency out. And the rest of them who are lighter than you are playing the frequency of a child. So you are the mother and the father. Whatever role or sex that you're playing that God has chosen for you. And they, they, they feel intimidated because you telling them, look, man. I need some more free time to myself. Feel me? I want to empower myself. I want to make myself beautiful. I want to take some vacation. I want to have some manicure. I need some. Imagine telling your kids that. Everybody can try if they want. Try it. Try it. <laughs> try sitting down with your kids and be like, well, I don't know who's going to be taking care of you guys, but I've decided that I'm going to take some time off to focus on myself and, um, no, I just, I just want to, like, just tell them that, you feel me? Tell them. Give them that scenario and see how they act. That bitch is doing too much. Relax, ho. Look at this, what they left you. Where is it? Can you see it? A whole blade on this shit. This is what I be telling y'all, man. Every time you speak about black empowerment, your kids will start acting like terrorists. They start crying. <laughs> At least that's how kids express themselves. But the older that you get, you're not going to show that form of weakness because crying in this society is demonized upon, right? They'll demonize you for, uh, for well, not demonize you, they'll belittle you and make you seem like, oh, he's so sensitive or she's so sensitive if you do it all the time. But kids cry all the time and we just accept it because reason why, because that's another form of communication that they use to articulate themselves. Because when they start crying, they see that you're worried. And you're like, oh, what's, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? So they use it. They use it until it doesn't work no more. Until they see that it's not working no more. And they're like, all right, I got to use a new form of communication. This one, again, to the language and start trying to speak, which they already learning as time goes on. But every time, man, we speak, you can look at American history itself. You can look at the history of black people around the world. Every time we, as a people, Remember, black is a frequency that we just playing a role in. You feel me? But as a spirit, we are everybody. You feel me? We just we are everybody. We are we are the combination of everybody else. And according to that environment, I can mutate into another form of a human. I literally have every culture in me. I literally do. And this for the survival of the human race and the spirit wanting to live and yearn and experience itself. It became everything else, but it started out as a person like me or even darker than me. Maybe there's, there's a chance that it was way darker than me. And we are just a frequency, you feel me? We are the highest form of frequency. And everything else is a different, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's another spectrum of a frequency, but we are the highest form of that frequency. You feel me? And when we speak, when I speak about black empowerment, you see that, you see that, you see these other race of people who feel intimidated because they feel intimidated because they feel less than. And I haven't even mentioned a word of another race yet, but yet they feel the need to react and demonize and want to hold you down like a, a grown kid, but they're not using crying this time. They want to use force. No, I want you to stay at the place where you are. Because if you was to elevate any higher than that in their mind, because they think that they're more than you, you will make me look little. So every time when we speak about black empowerment, these people take... Hold on, God damn, time, time be flying. These, well, I got like five more. I only say solid, but it's solid. This is a solid walk. <laughs> but these people take it upon themselves to want to belittle you. To want to sh shut you up, like, sh don't say that. It's offensive to us. I'm like, what is so offensive to you if I'm talking about black empowerment? If I'm talking about my head, my complexion, the way I look, black history and everything else like that, why is this so offensive to you as a person? Why? If I can hear about Alexander and Albert Einstein and all that stuff, then how come I'm not taking offensive when I hear about these people? Or if I can hear about Roberto, Jose, or whoever, Gandhi, and everybody else, if I can hear about all these other places, how come I'm not taking that offensive? Why is it that every time I speak about black empowerment or black history or what it means to be black, 
in scientific sense, you happen to take it very personal and you happen to display it out publicly. You do. I see it right now. Just being outside, I feel it. You feel the energy. You be like, damn, nigga. I ain't even put this shit on tape yet. Look at that. Why? You need to start asking yourself these questions. Because nobody's insulting you. You feel me? Ain't nobody insulted you yet. Nobody did. Nobody said nothing about white, Spanish, or anything else like that. I said those inside. But I'm saying on tape right now. I did not use the great... I did not use a degrading term. You see how I look? And even if I use a degrading term, it's not like I was saying something that was a lie. But I did not use any degrading term as as far as I'll be speaking in this 10 minutes or going on 11 minutes. But yeah, you take it very, very offensive. And I want to know why. And the reason why spiritually we are the guardians of this earth itself. Guardians, you heard me? You see how the little guardians, yeah? We are the guardians of this earth itself. You feel me? We are. We, we, we portray, even scientifically, they tell you all humans came out of Africa. You feel me? It just is true, my nigga. How is it that we have a spirit of a guardian? We are calm. We, it's like we knowing. You feel me? Like people feel safe around us. People love to hear our music, love to be, in, uh, be uh, hear our culture and everything else like that. They only get offended when you start talking black. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. But yeah, you like hip hop music. You like hip hop dancing. You like our culture. You like our celebrities. You like you like everything about us, but yet you don't want to admit to the fact that these black things that I say scientifically are true. And you wouldn't even let your daughter marry or, or see us in any form or shape. And I'm talking about all race. I'm not just talking about one race. So don't attach it to a specific race like white or Hispanic. Or We're talking about all other races apart from black. You feel me? But yeah, you wouldn't let your daughter date a person like me. You wouldn't let, you feel, you be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But yeah, you like to listen to my art and everything else about me. You love that without admitting it. But when I speak about it, you take it upon yourself to feel offended and attacked. And you need to start asking yourself those questions because I see it already and I'm like, whoa. And it's not all of them. I'm just addressing those who it applies to. It's applicable, excuse my twisting of the word. I, I make a lot of excuses when I can't pronounce words, I blame it on the languages that I speak. Maybe it's true or maybe it's not. I just gotta learn how to pronounce these things a little better, you feel me? That's just an excuse. I think it's more likely to be just an excuse. <laughs> you feel me? I'm just saying though, no, I'm not even gonna say that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you feel me? When we speak about, I can speak about black all day, my nigga. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I could just keep going. Like, you feel me? I think the black woman gave every other woman a form. It gave them shape. It gave them hips. It gave them a look. Like, it gave them beauty. It gave them everything that it is today. You feel me? Not you. You added on that or that. But if I'm the foundation of what you are, then you feel me? I, that's how I see it, man. If we if we're the first that came out of Africa and we still white itself, we not we didn't change. We only mutated. Our nose changed, our lips, our complexion, and everything. But it's still the same person. The message is we are all the same people. All we did was just mutated into a different version of ourselves. Remember, you are everything that you are. You just mutated. It's not something that was force upon you you chose to go to that place and you became mutated by genetically you became mutated not the shit that people try to inject you with things and try to force an image upon you no this is a mutation where things take place naturally you feel me not no enviness where people become very envious of you and start genetic genetically trying to fuck up your dna and all that stuff and became and become you no know i mean like you know not that kind we're not talking about that kind we're talking about naturally where the climate changes the shape of your nose because you're not in africa no more you don't need this uh big nose to breathe in more air because it's hot we give you a narrow nose because you're in a climate where you don't need to breathe in all that cold air so you you get a narrow nose so you your nose become narrow so you can breathe in that environment matter of fact you don't even need this dark complexion anymore because you're not in a hot climate where you need heat and you need yourself protected from this, from, 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 from the heat and everything else like that. We'll give you a lighter complexion. 
so you can blend in with your environment so you don't stick out like a sore thumb and we're gonna change we're gonna change the structure of your hair so your hair is much longer so it can warm your body up like that and this is how it works it's for the survival of the individual or the groups of individual or the spirit itself you feel me and this is what we call mutation you feel me? Th th that's just what it is. And your bone is going to be a little bigger because you, cause you're going to need all that warmness to warm you up in this environment. So you're going to be a little bigger. You see, some Africans are a little more leaner and taller because of the environment that we're in. So we're a little more skinny and we're a little more lean and we're a little more taller. Some white men just happen to be more big boned. Most of them are just very big boned and big and tall because there was an environment that requires heat for them to sustain they, they needed that extra meat on them we didn't need that extra meat you can't be fat in africa you go you're gonna sweat to death like you're like oh shit it's hot like it's fat people don't so you don't see that many fat people. it's not because they starve and no the environment doesn't even require that and this is what we call mutation you feel me but you will take it offensive because you don't want to look at it from a scientific point of view you are so afraid of being associated with something like my complexion that you take it offensive but we are all the same complexion we just on a different spectrum of brown i happen to be a darker brown you happen to be a very very light brown then there's people that's lighter 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 than you way lighter than you you're not even light you're not to the point where they calling them white but they're not really white that race ain't coming yet i think that race is going to come in but it hasn't come in yet you feel me but anyway i gotta go man you already know um yeah, have some self-confidence, man. Stop letting words change you. That niggas is too soft for me, man. That's why you can't speak about these things, because they're too sensitive, man. Feel me? And how let you